Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. So today we are going to see the ways to break the singleton design pattern. So let's first quickly start with creating a singleton design pattern. So for that I am going to quickly create a singleton class. Okay, I am just naming it singleton. Now I have already told you there are three ways to create three important points to be taken care of while creating a singleton class. First, create a particular instance variable. So I am creating it as private static and the return type will be the class itself and the name will be singleton. Now a very important second point is that to make its constructor private. So first of all create a constructor and make it private. By making private you make sure that the object of the singleton class with a new keyword. So that's, that's how you make sure that once you make a, a particular constructor private Nobody is capable enough to create an instance and any instance of singleton class with the constructor. Now, if you're not capable enough to create a singleton instance with new keyword, how would you do that? So there must be some method, and that method has to be private static method, which is capable enough to return you a singleton object. And I'm going to name it as get instance. And this method is going to return me a singleton object. Now this is lazy loading so first I'm going to check if my singleton is null if it is null then only instantiate it with new and I can do it here because the constructor is private but it is accessible here because it is in the same class now if I create another class and try to instantiate with a new keyword like I've done here I will not be able to do that now return the singleton a return statement and return the singleton instance so that is as simple as that so the three things that you have to note down while creating a singleton uh, class design pattern is your first of the instance variable if it is eager loaded just create a new and return from here if it is not e eager loaded if it is lazy loaded then just create an instance with this particular method if it is null then only create a singleton instance else return the or same what it is and very important thing make it as private so that another class which we are going to create should not be able to break it or create a variable with a new instance a new instance with a new keyword so now let's quickly see the ways to break singleton design pattern We have heard a lot from our colleagues that being a fresher or one to three years of experienced people, they are facing a lot of difficulties in hitting big giant IT companies because they are not getting response back from their HRs. They even try to apply through various platforms, but all their hard work goes in vain. So what's the solution? So we found a solution for this and that's nothing but Relevel by Akan Academy. So what do you need to do? First thing, register at Relevel. Secondly, participate in the test which consists of five rounds and these challenges are based on the skill set in the field that you choose to work upon, it's like the back and front end of the business. Then the third thing, you will get a re-level score based on your performance and that will be that too within 24 hours. Now, you will be asking me the benefit of doing that. So with re-level, you, your college, your degree doesn't matter. What matters is your skill set. And if you clear all the th five rounds of this test, you will and if you get the job, you will get 100% refund of the registration fee that you have paid. Also, you can book slots so that you can give tests as per your comfortable time. The last but not the least benefit is that you will give the test to the comfort of your home and kickstart the amazing career that you have dreamt of. Registrations are open and you can avail 10% discount with the coupon code code 10. The link to the relevel and the discount code is given in the description below. Okay. So, before that, let's quickly see whether we have made our singleton in uh, singleton class properly or not or we are able to implement the singleton design pattern properly or not. So, how would, how would I make sure that I have done it rightly? I'm going to create original singleton instance equals to singleton dot get instance. Now this method should return me some of the instance of the singleton class. Now I'm going to create a duplicate of the same with the same instance with the get instance method and I'm going to name it duplicate singleton instance. Now this get instance method I've told you that it will first check if it is null. If it is null then it will create a new object else it will return the same. So if our singleton class is written properly then I should be able to get the hash code as equal for both the original and duplicate singleton. So let me quickly write a system dot out dot println for you where I'm going to see the hash code for 
original singleton instance is plus original singleton how would you print the hash code the way to print the hash code is dot hash code method now as soon as you do that just copy and paste the same thing for duplicate instance and let's see if the duplicate instance hash code and original hash code is same then the hash code should be written as same integer object so if you can see the hash code of original instance is also this and for the duplicate is also this so this proves that since the hash code of both the things are same that means our singleton design pattern is properly implemented this particular instance everything that we have done here is perfect now there must be some way to break the singleton design pattern as i've already told you in the previous lecture that there are few ways to do that the very first way is to reflect to use the reflection so this is the way in which you can create an instance of singleton design pattern that you have created but the hash code will be different that means that you have broken successfully your singleton design pattern and two different objects are created at two different memory locations with the help of these hash codes and that means your singleton design pattern is no more singleton it has become prototype so let's quickly see how to do that now to use a singleton design pattern the first thing you need to catch hold is of class now class of type suppose currently i'm using a wildcard and my class will be the singleton class now i want to catch hold of my singleton class first so how to do that it's the this the method to do that is class dot for name we have already learned about this right so class dot for name is a way in reflection to catch hold of our singleton design pattern now first have this package name dot your class name that's how you give the argument to class dot for name now it's going to give you some throws exception it says class not found exception there can be chance that in this package this particular class is not found then it says that it is a compile time checked exception it says maybe the class is not found now as soon as with this line number 16 we have catch hold of our singleton class now i want to catch hold of my constructor and the way to do is is through constructor of type singleton class and i'm just naming it as constructor equals to the way a method to do that is singleton class dot get declared constructor without any argument now it's going to ask me for casting purpose now i'm going to cast it now it's going to ask me for some throws declaration and that throws declaration is not going to be nothing but no method no such method found exception there can be case that this type of constructor is not there just a simple throws checked exception nothing else just put a throws and you will be good to go so now here with line number 18 you have the class you have you you got the hold of singleton class with this line number 19 you got even the hold of constructor now you know that the constructor is private if you can see the constructor is private you need to make it accessible to this class so that you will be able to create new instance with this constructor the way to do that is constructor dot set accessibility as true as soon as you do this with line number 20 you have made sure that your singleton's private constructor is no more private and that is because of reflection you have made it accessible to even this class way to break singleton design pattern now the things are just so easy for now and you can just create constructor dot new instance and as soon as you create a new instance what do you think you're going to get you're going to get nothing but a singleton instance and what is this let me make the name of the singleton instance as uh, reflection okay broken single then using reflection simple this is my instance name i instance okay now it's asking me for the throws and it says instantiation exception there might be chances that you are not able to instantiate your particular object of type singleton there can be a case right now how do i make sure that yes my reflection has actually properly broken my singleton design pattern the way again to do is that print the hash code 
so this is the hash code of the original instance now i'm going to print the hash code of the broken singleton design pattern using reflection if the two hash codes are different that means you have successfully broken your singleton design pattern and you are capable enough to print two different hash codes that is nothing but two different memory locations okay so you can see this is the original instance and this is the broken instance so you can see my original instance was the same my duplicate instance was also same now my original instance is again the same even after reflection and now with the broken instance you can see that your your reflection is complete but with reflection of successfully broken your singleton design pattern hash code is different if the hash code is different that means the object is different i hope this much is clear now let's let me quickly make you go through the way the second way to break the singleton design pattern that is through serialization okay so let me quickly print it for you so that there is no confusion breaking using serialization okay now ways through which we can serialize a particular object so this is serialization process i hope you know what is this process it's nothing but object output stream and object output stream is going to have a new file output stream we have already covered this right now i'm going to create a new file at d location and i'm going to name it as let's say suppose serialization.ser this is my file name where i'm going to serialize my object i'm going to serialize my initial object now first of all it will ask you for throws so let's put the throws that there might be case that file is not found so that is fine it will create an object and this is just a checked exception nothing else now on that object output stream i'm going to write my object what is my object to be written i want my original singleton instance to be written and as soon as you write it just close your object output stream so this is the way to serialize it now with deserialization what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly create an object input stream where i'm going to read my object that i've already written so input stream equals to new object input stream and it's going to have new file input stream and it's going to have nothing but the path from where i'm going to read it so this is the path and from here i'm going to read it all okay now as soon as i have my input stream dot read object if i'm going to read object i'm going to have something called as the object read so i'm going to have my singleton again broken completely so broken singleton using serialization using C R I A L I Z serialization. Simple as that. It's going to throw something. So first cast it. Okay, there is no no throws. It's just going to cast it to singleton. To make it singleton, uh, to make it serializable, you have to implement serializable here. I hope that much will be knowing. So as soon as I implement my serializable interface, a default ID is expected. I've added the default ID and now my singleton class. the object of the singleton class is capable enough to be actually converted into the text file data so so that we can serialize it and deserialize it so this is a simple way serialize ob with object output stream right to this particular file path which we have given and close it now read it and now you are going to have it broken so how do you make sure it is broken so the same thing we are going to follow again let's print the original hash code and then let's quickly print the broken hash code the hash code of broken singleton object using serialization okay so this is my original hash code and this is my serializable hash code let's quickly run it hopefully there is no exception 
Okay, so let's quickly see the console. The original is this. The same is duplicate. The same is original and with reflection it is broken. Now we have done using serialization. With serialization also the original is same if you can see all the three and this is also same. But when you are deserializing it then the hash code is different. That means it is broken. So successfully we have broken the serialization design pattern using two technique. Now please let me quickly break this with the third way. That is a very simple way. Now we are going to break it using clonable. Okay. So breaking using clone method, using clone, using cloning, that's the way. Now to do that, okay, let me quickly document it for you, cloning. To make it clonable, you have to implement clonable interface, remember that. Now once you have implemented the clonable, you can override the clone method also. Okay, now once you have clonable, done and there in place then there is two simple way to clone and what is the way to clone it first of all create an instance of singleton and we can name it as broken singleton using cloning using cloning instance and how do you clone it a very simple way to clone is your original instance dot clone method as simple and as that and as soon as you clone it's going to give you some casting issues now as soon as you cast it there is going to be a thrown issue clonable not supported exception so we have handled all the catched time compile time exceptions now the same thing again i have to do there is nothing but printing the hash codes now i'm expecting that even this is broken and my hash code for the both of them are going to be different now I'm going to use it here and I'm going to use it here so let's quickly run it for you and let's see the result out of it okay so if you can see the hash code for all the instances of the instance that was created initially and the duplicate the same the broken one is different with reflection it is the original instance using serialization is same as all the three but broken using serialization when we deserialized it. Now the hash code of original instance is same as above but it is broken when we are just using original object dot clone. As soon as you clone a new object is created in Java, a new memory address is given that is why the hash code is changed. So you can see all the instances are same when you are trying to print the hash code of original singleton instance but as soon as you try to print the instance which is created using either reflection or using serialization deserialization process and cloning in all the three ways the ins new instance is created with a different hash code that i can show you here the link to the code base is will be given in the description below there are more ways apart from these three ways to break the singleton design pattern that is thread executor services but if we have not covered this concept yet on the channel so if you want us to cover the multi-threading executor service and the ways to break design pattern using the thread executor please let me know in the comment section.